Hi everybody, it is your AP Biology teacher, Mr. Poser. Today we're continuing our Science Practices playlist or unit for AP Biology by talking about chi-square hypothesis testing. And this is actually a really important um, concept in AP Biology. Guaranteed you're going to see some chi-square stuff on the test. And this is something that um, the College Board really stresses that AP instructors do. Um, with their students is any lab that you conduct, you conduct a chi-square hypothesis test um, as well to determine whether or not your data is statistically significant. Um, so a lot of times what, what you think of when, in, in science is that you form a hypothesis at the beginning of your experiment and based on your prior knowledge and your background or perhaps other data or theories um, and then you test whether or not that hypothesis is correct. Okay, and this is basically a way of showing definitively whether or not you should accept your null hypothesis or reject your null hypothesis or your alternative hypothesis, which is another video that we had um, earlier in this series. All right, this is a definitive way to determine whether or not your hypothesis is correct. Okay, um, and this is what chi-square is. The question is at the beginning of, you know, your data analysis after you collect your data and experiment. Is the data statistically significant? Or in other words, does the data that we observe differ from the data that we expected through our hypothesis? Okay, so you make a hypothesis about the distribution of data points, um, and this is determining whether or not you're right. So this picture right here, um, like say for example, if we expect a certain ratio of, let's just say these are individuals in a population, Right, we expect 65 here, 65 there, 35 there, and 35 there. Um, is what we observed statistically significant? Meaning, does it is it different enough from what we expected that we can suspect something is going on here? That the independent variable or whatever we're testing has an effect on the distribution of data points. Okay, and this will start to make more sense once we actually walk through an example. Once we put it into context. Okay, so more often than not, where, where you're going to see uh, chi-square testing in AP Biology is with respect to um, genetics, Mendelian genetics, non-Mendelian genetics, and Punnett squares. Okay, so you might see a chi-square analysis question about um, fruit fly experiments or some kind of genetic cross like this. Okay, so like for example, a Punnett square, as we've you know, hopefully learned in Unit 5, um, you, a Punnett square is a tool that's used for predicting ratios of offspring. So if you know the genotypes of the two parents, then you should know the, the genotypes of all the offspring, okay? And they should be in a predictable ratio. Like say if we cross these two, right, we would expect 75% dominant phenotypes, presuming this is autosomal dominance, um, and completely dominant, and then we would expect 25% recessive phenotypes, okay? But what if, you know, uh, there's 20 offspring that come from this cross, okay? We would expect 15 to be dominant and 5 to be recessive. That's a 75 to 25% uh, ratio, right? But what if we got something like this? We got 8 dominant and 12 recessive, okay? Then we would assume that, hmm, something's going, something's off here, and our hypothesis is not correct, and maybe autosomal dominance is not what we would call the mode of inheritance of how these uh, these traits get passed down. Maybe we can't just do a regular old Punnett square um, to determine whether or not, you know, or the, the to determine the mode of inheritance, okay? So that's the context that you're going to kind of see this in, all right? And I'm going to show you how you can actually definitively show, no, this is not we, what we expected, or yes, this is what we expected um, based on our biology knowledge and previous data. Okay, so uh, like I said, we can show whether the, the results are, are expected and if our alternative or null hypothesis are correct using chi-square analysis. Okay, that's what this is about, determining whether or not we are correct definitively using statistics. All right, and this is the lab that I always like to do with my, my students, okay, is uh, we take, take a big bag of M&Ms, right? And this is something that I used to wonder myself when I was eating M&Ms as a little kid. I don't know. I liked looking at the colors. Um, and I always wondered, like, hmm, did they make it even amount? Why do I have so many more uh, blue M&Ms than I do red ones? Because, like, blue was my favorite color. Um, or maybe it was red. I don't know. But this is something that I, that I kind of used to wonder about myself. Do they make, does Mars make an even number of M&Ms of each color? Okay, and is, is, are they packaged like evenly in each bag or is there some kind of uh, different ratio of M&M colors that we might expect? Okay, so there's six M&M colors, right? 
And we would expect, okay, if our hypothesis is saying, okay, M&Ms are evenly distributed, then we would expect one out of six, right, because there are six colors, one sixth of all M&Ms to be each color, right? So in other words, our expected percentages of M&Ms is going to be 16% red, 16% orange, so on and so forth, okay? Um, so that's what we would expect, right? And these are pictures that I took of me doing this, this lab. And I ate all the M&Ms too, shamelessly. Um, so check it out. Uh, what we did next, or what I did next, okay, if I'm setting my expected percentages to be 16.6%, uh, all right? I'm expecting an even distribution. And maybe that's not quite what I got. So I counted every color. I sorted out the M&Ms and I counted them up by color. I got 14 red, 20 orange, 12 yellow, green, uh, 21 greens, 22 blues, and 13 browns, uh, which adds up to a 102 total, okay? So 102 M&Ms in my bag, okay? Now, think about that. I'm expecting one-sixth of all of these colors uh, to, to be like even, right? So one-sixth of 120, or excuse me, 102, that's what I'm expecting as far as the number of M&Ms of each color in each bag, right? So how do I determine that? Well, I would simply just multiply 0.166 by 102 to get the expected number of color of each M&Ms, all right? So I am expecting, based on my hypothesis, 17 M&Ms of each color. And we can see here that that's not what I got. 17 of each color, but that's not exactly um, what I got in my bag of M&Ms, okay? Now the question is, all right, my data is different from what I expected, but is it different enough? Is it different enough for me to take note? Um, and is it significantly different, okay? Is, there's a margin here, okay? And if it's only a little different, then we can chalk that up to, hey, it's only different because of chance, okay? But if there's a significant difference, then that means there's something changing from observed to expected that is significant and there's something else going on besides chance that is changing the percentages of or the ratios of my M&M &M colors, okay? And this is your chi-square equation. On the AP exam, you receive this equation, so you don't have to memorize it. I don't know if it spells out um, what all the variables are here for you, but it's, you know, here's your equation. It's going to be handed to you. Okay, and the main thing that you have to remember is that to get your chi-square value, all right, because you're going to be calculating a value here in a sec, okay, O stands for observed value, E stands for expected value, okay, and then this sigma here represents the sum of. It means you're going to be doing some adding, okay? So basically, you're going to be doing this formula right here, O minus E, observed minus expected squared divided by expected, okay? You're going to be finding a bunch of those numbers, then adding them all up to get your chi-square value. All right, ready? Here we go. Um, so in order to do this, like I said, let's start with red. You're going to do this for each one of your variations, right? So if this was a Punnett square, you'd say like, oh, I got this many dominants, okay, but I only expected this many dominants, okay? Or like I expected this many recessives and I only got this many recessives. Um, this is how it's going to work for our M&Ms though, okay? I counted 14 M&Ms in my bag and I expected 17, okay? So if I were to plug this into the equation, I would go, Observe minus expected, 14 minus 17, square that, divided by expected, all right? And if you do that math, 14 minus 17 squared divided by 17, you should get 0 0.529, all right? And you got to store that number somewhere because you got to add it up with all the other, um, with all the other chi-square values that you're going to get, okay? So that's 0 0.529 for red. All right, I'm going to do the same thing for orange, 20 minus 17 squared divided by 17, you get 0 0.529, okay? Uh, I know the yellow isn't super easy to see, but yellow, uh, 12 minus 17 squared, and you're always going to end up with a positive number, right, because you're squaring it. Uh, 12 minus 17 squared divided by 17, you get 1.471. 21 minus 17, because you got 21 greens, you got 0 0.941. 22 minus 17 squared divided by 17, you get 1.471. And then our last one, we got 13 brown M&Ms. So 13 minus 17 squared divided by 17 is 0 0.941, okay? So you just got to, this is going to be kind of plug and chug for a little bit. Observe minus expected squared divided by expected. You do that for all of your different uh, variations, okay? So um, if you're following along, this is what I got, 0 0.529, 0 0.529, 1.471, so on and so forth, okay? Um, so here's all my values, but the last thing that we have to do in order to get our total chi-square value is we have to add them all up, and that's what that sigma means. You have to add up all those different numbers. All right, and if you do the math, we end up with a chi-square value of 5.882. Hooray! Now, what does that mean? 
okay? We gotta, we gotta do, do one more step um, with our chi-square value, and that is that we have to compare it with what we call the critical value, okay? So we're going to compare what we got to another value, all right? And so we're gonna see whether it's bigger or if it's smaller, if it's greater or it's less than, okay? So I put it right here. To determine whether or, whether or not data is statistically significant or whether observed values are significantly di different than our expected values, we compare our chi-square value to a critical value found in this table. All right, and if you Google chi-square distribution or critical values of chi-square, you can just come up with this table. Um, here it is. And it looks like a bunch of kind of scary decimals and scary numbers, uh, but it's not really that scary. And uh, we, we can break it down for you. Now, if you ask me how these uh, critical values are derived, I'm going to be totally honest with you. I don't know. Okay, so ask somebody who majored in statistics or something like that, uh, majored in math or something. I'm not sure how to derive chi-square values. So if you want to teach me, that'd be great. I looked it up and I'm still like, I don't really get this all that much. Uh, but if you want to teach me it, I'm, I'm all ears, all right? But anyway, um, here's our chi-square value and we have to compare it to a value on this table to see whether or not our data is significant. Okay, if our value is greater than the critical value, the data is significant and we reject the null hypothesis. If our value is less than the critical value, the data is not significant and we accept the null hypothesis. So basically, if our number is bigger than a magic number that we're gonna find on this, uh, on this table, okay, then the data is significant. Okay, there's something else going on here that's affecting uh, what we observe versus what we expected. Um, besides chance, all right? And if it's not bigger, then we accept the null and we're gonna say, yeah, I was right and M&Ms are evenly distributed, okay? So here we go. How do we find that number? Okay, we gotta find the first, the degrees of freedom. Um, and the degrees of freedom is represented by this letter D and it's really easy to find the degrees of freedom. D equals N minus one, okay? Um, so the degrees of freedom, in other words, is the number of terms or the number of variations that you have um, in your experiment minus one, okay? So if this were, if it were dominance and recessive, right, you have two options, your degrees of freedom would be one, okay? But we have six M&M colors, all right? Our, that's our number of terms. That's how many uh, terms we added up, right? That's our number of terms minus one. So that means our no degrees of freedom is five, okay? We need five degrees of freedom, on our data table, all right? So that means our D value is five. Our critical value that we have to compare our chi-square value to is in this row right here, five degrees of freedom, okay? So what we're looking for are these three numbers right here, okay? Our next step, once we find the degrees of freedom, it says then we compare our chi-square value to the one in the table underneath P equals 0 0.05, okay? Um, and by the way, these are what we call confidence intervals. If our chi-square value exceeds the number in the first column, P equals 0 0.05, then we can say that we are 95% confident that there is a significant difference in the data. Okay, so these are what we call confidence intervals. All right, not super important for us to know a whole lot about right now, um, but basically that's what that's saying, is that if our number is bigger than 0 0.05, the, the number in zero, the 0.05 column, we are 95% confident, here would be 99% confident, and here we would be 99.9% .9 confident that there's a significant difference, okay? So if you can find it, all right, I bet you can find it right now, what is our critical value that we have to compare to? Well, it's gonna be 11.07, okay? Check it out, that's our 0 0.05 um, confidence interval, five degrees of freedom, that's our magic number right there. So you tell me, here's our chi-square value, it's 5.882, our critical value is 11.07. Is our data significant? Is there a significant difference between what we observed, okay, with the, the ratio of M&Ms in my bag, and what we expected, which was that the, each, the ratio of M&Ms is gonna be even? Okay, what can we say? Well, da, 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 come on, anticlimactic, flip the page. Are you serious? Okay, there we go. Our chi-square value did not exceed the critical value for D equals five, so therefore, our data is not statistically significant. There is no significant difference, significant difference, between what we expected and what we observed. And notice how I'm saying significant. There Was there a difference? Yes, they weren't all 17, 
right? But the big the difference between them was not big enough to be deemed significant. Okay, and that means that the differences in our ratios of M and M's uh, was due to chance. Okay, that's according to our test. There is no significant difference between the observed values and expected values. Any variations from the expected data are due to chance, and we accept the null hypothesis. All right, we cannot definitively say that there is a difference um, in the ratios of M and M's in a bag according to our data. All right, according to our results, as I put down here, M and M's are evenly distributed by color. All right, let's pretend that we got say greater than 11.07. Okay, then just hypothetically, our data would be statistically significant. There is a significant difference between observed and expected. Some factor other than chance, you, which is usually your independent variable in an experiment, uh, causes the difference between the observed and the expected, and we would reject the null hypothesis. Okay? And then we would say, well, M&Ms, according to our data, are not evenly distributed by color. Okay, And that's what chi-square is all about. Basically, you're taking observed minus expected, squared divided by expected, adding them all up, taking your value and comparing it to the value on the table. And that's it, okay? So there's a few steps to this, all right? Now, here's a screenshot of an AP exam question, all right? And like I said, here's your uh, Thomas Hunt Morgan fruit flies, all right? Check it out. This is what we observed um, for each of these phenotypes. This is what we expected. Is there a significant difference between what we observed and what we expected, okay? So if we were to work this out ourselves, I blew up the table a little bit. Okay, I'm going to challenge you, if you would like, you can try this on your own, and I'll walk through the example. So if you want to try this for yourself and find the critical value for yourself, or the your chi-square value for yourself, you can do that. Um, but I'm just going to go ahead. All right, if we do observe minus expected squared divided by expected for each of these four different um, values, all right, and this is, you know, this is the math that would go into that. And what we would get is this chi-square value is 10.4 eight or 10.479, all right, 187 minus 172 squared divided by 171, okay, and you do that for all four, all right, just unlike our um, M&Ms, it's not always going to be the same expected value, okay, just a heads up. Now, so there's the critical value, 10.479, is there a significant difference, okay, let's see if you can find the critical value from before, um, if you want to pause and find the critical value yourself based on what we talked about before, you can, I'm going to keep going though. Check it out. Our critical value should be 7.815. Now, how did we find that? Check it out. We have four different phenotypes, right, which means our degrees of freedom is three. And here's our first column, 0 0.05. There's our critical value. Does that mean our data is significant? No, it does. Wait, yes, it does. It does mean our data is significant. Sorry. Yes. Yes, it does. Huh. That's embarrassing. It's been a while. Yes. <laughs> It is significant. Okay? Our uh, chi-square value does exceed the critical value. Yes, there is a significant difference between what we observed and what we expected. Okay, So this is a chi-square question. Here is the options that would come up. All right, And what we found is that, yes, our calculated value is 10.48, uh, and the critical value is 7.2. It's kind of embarrassing that I messed that up right at the last moment. But yes, our data would be significant in that. There is a significant difference between uh, the expected ratios of each of these phenotypes and the observed ratios. All right, that is it for this video. Please let me know if you have any questions, and we'll see you next time.